Yeah, I think the, the key thing from the winter was how we debriefed the end of last summer and the previous winter. And we spent a lot of time, um, October, November time, assessing how the summer had gone. We assessed all our injuries. We assessed what they'd done last winter, the players, in terms of their preparation. And I think it's fair to say that we felt that the, the team could be a little bit more robust. We felt they needed to do a bit more running, spend more time on their feet. So the players have done a lot more training, a lot more physical training over this winter. Um, the coaches devised a programme that meant that the players had four days training on the bounce, um, as opposed to Monday, Tuesday training, Wednesday off, Thursday, Friday. Um, and, and they also, whilst they introduced a lot more running into the programme, the bowlers also started to bowl a lot earlier, so that the idea was that come the start of the season they weren't suddenly peaking and spiking their overs because they hadn't bowled a lot. So the idea was that from January to start really building the overs up. So, you know, this obviously, the, the, the delay that we've now seemed to be about to have um, has come at a tough time for them because obviously they practice hard, they've worked hard, they got themselves ready. They went to Lamanga, um, and Lamanga for the week that they were there was absolutely fantastic. Good facilities, great to get the bowlers out on grass. Um, they went a few days early, um, so it, it, it's a shame that it's got to where it has. But it, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, no, the, the practice over the winter, the training over the winter, the physical prep over the winter, and leading into Lamanga. Um, for the squad has been absolutely excellent. Well, the, the, when they got back from Spain the early hours of last Sunday, um, I, I asked them all to stay away from the ground for seven days. Um, and the same with the three that came back from Sri Lanka. So Jeetan Patel, obviously been with the England squad as the spin bowling coach. Uh, Wopsy and Sibs as well were there on that, that trip and I asked them all to stay away for a further seven days. Um, and we were looking potentially at bringing the squad in in small groups from Monday. Um, that's something we, we're going to look at. And I think at this stage, um, we, we may push that back um, by a couple of weeks and, and give them a little bit more time at home, they can do their individual training. The concern at the moment for us is bringing the group together as a whole because you don't know who they've been in contact with, you don't know what um, they're going to take away from the group and obviously you know they've got kids at home, you know some have got elderly um, relatives, you know you've just got to be so careful with, with contact. So the advice that we've taken from our club doctor um, has been excellent um, and Gurge is someone who is well connected, you know he works with us in Villa, he works with the England cricket team, he works with us, so we get, we get excellent up to date information and his advice is you know keep the group small um, and be mindful of making sure that we don't have you know, the players together for too long. So we, we will start to do some practice, we will certainly start to do some physical training again, but for the moment it's going to be individually based fitness training and then I guess the plan will then be to sort of start to build up again ready and hopefully for when we do get some cricket. Yeah, and I think that's the same for, for everybody, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're in cricket or, or you know, whatever business you're in, um, you know, the, the uncertainty, I think, is, is the biggest concern and uncertainty always brings um, nervousness, it always brings, you know, people just not quite sure um, and, and we've got a lot of players and coaches in our setup who, you know, they're well planned, they're well organised, they like to know what they're doing from minute to minute, you've got others who, you know, they turn up and, you know, they, they uh, I suppose they live by the seat of their pants and that, that's how a lot of people are very different in the way they operate. So for us what we've tried to do is to keep the information factually correct. We've tried not to guess at anything. We've tried not to double guess and second guess what the ECB or the government are going to offer. So you know the, the lines of communication from the ECB has been absolutely brilliant. You know they've fed good information into the club. Uh, we have our own a coronavirus group that meets twice a week here at Edgebaston um, and that's heads of department and we meet, we talk about the situation, we assess the information we've been given from the ECB and from the government and then we, we've made plans accordingly. So we, we've been meeting for a few weeks now so I think we're well organised, we're well planned and then what we've tried to do with everybody at the club is to give good information and obviously to the players and to the coaching staff and the fitness staff you know, we, we've not been guessing and it's been factual information, um, but we've, we've tried to do that as often as we can. Um, so we, we think we're in quite a good place, um, but equally, um, you know, th there is uncertain times ahead.
Yes, there are, and that, there has to be. You know, I, I think you know one of the things that we're looking at as a club, and you know, the, the senior management group and the exec group is looking at what do we need to do to make sure that we can trade through this this period. Um, what do we need to do to make sure that you know we have a cricket club at the end of this period, and that that's the most important thing. But equally, along with that, you know, you've got to remember that you're dealing with people. You know, you're dealing with human beings and it's about making sure that we keep everybody safe, we keep everybody well, we give the best advice we can possibly give um, and, and we really do look after all of our staff, not you know, not just the playing staff but every member of staff that work here at Edgebaston. We've obviously got to look after our membership as well because you know that there, there are some of them that are in the, the tricky category in terms of you know we've really got to be careful with them. So you know we, we want to put on cricket here at Edgebaston. We want people to come here for events, for cricket, you know we want people of all ages to come and enjoy and enjoy the game of cricket but we have to be governed by what's being offered centrally and as I say so far we've been getting good information um, but but I think the speed of how things have caught up with us so very quickly um, has been the thing probably that has taken everyone by surprise at this stage. In, in absolutely and, and as I say that that applies to you know people in the community around here that applies to members that applies to everybody that works here at the ground you know it, for us to say you know we want to practice that also means that the ground staff have got to be in they've got to work together they've got to prep they've got to produce pitches cut the outfield make sure the nets are in good condition so you know we can't be selfish and just say well you know we need to play cricket it's actually a, the bigger picture and there's there's an awful lot of people that work here at Edgebaston to make things happen uh, and as I say we've got an awful lot of very very good people attached to the club and it's really important that we look after them because as I say when they go away from here they're going to be in contact with their family um, and it's important that we we think about that we respect that um, and I think the club are taking really good sensible steps to make sure that we do do exactly that but you're absolutely right you know sport is a is a relief for most people in this country it's you know they've been to work all week and we want sport on television we want sport in stadiums we want sport in grounds that people can go and watch takes their mind off tough times but unfortunately at the moment you know we can't offer cricket and, and obviously all the other sports are, are suspended as well um, but you know the hope is that you know, like all sports and like everything else, that we get through it, um, we're stronger for it, we learn from it, um, but we do come out the other side. But it, it's, you know, the uncertainty, I, I think, is the thing that causes us all some anguish along the way.